Hello, welcome to this video on band pass filters. I will go over and I will go in this video over um, how to build band pass filters using series resonance circuits. I will try to introduce the basic theory and then I will show you how the bandwidth and the resonance frequency uh, are determined by different components of the uh, series resonance circuit. And then I will illustrate um, this concept through an example. Okay, the ideal series resonance circuit is shown in this figure. We have an inductor in series with a capacitor C. Um, the total impedance seen between these two terminals is equal simply to the impedance of the inductor plus the impedance of the capacitor. The impedance of the inductor is equal to J omega L. The impedance of the capacitor is minus J over omega C. Okay, so when you sum them, you get JXL minus JXC where XL is the reactance of the inductance, which is which is one over which is which is omega L, and the XC is the reactance of the capacitance, which is one over omega C. Now, at the, there is one specific frequency at these two complex numbers will cancel each other out. You can see, for low frequency, one over omega C will be small, and this number will be a large imaginary, imaginary and negative number something like minus G1000, minus G2000, it will dominate over this small, smaller number. But for higher frequency above resonance, omega G, omega L will be larger in magnitude than minus, one, minus G over omega C. So for example, this one above resonance, this would be say G1000, and this would be minus G100. So the net, net result is that this would be an inductive term. The meaning that it's an imaginary term with a positive sign. But at resonance, at resonance, they, they, these two terms negate one another, they cancel one another. This would be J100, this would be minus J100. This would be J20, this would be minus J20. And the net result is zero. So between these two terminals at resonance, we effectively see short circuit. So how do we determine the resonance frequency? Simply we say, we set this number to zero. So G omega L must equal to G over omega C or omega uh, R uh, omega R L is equal to one omega R C when omega R is the angular resonance frequency in radia in per second. Of course, you simply multiply by omega R the other side, divide by L C, take the square root. You obtain the well-known result that the angular frequency, uh, angular resonance frequency is omega R is equal to one over square root L C. And if you want to get, of course, the resonance frequency in hertz, you can simply write that uh, FR uh, is equal to omega R over 2 pi, or that FR is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root LC, and this is in hertz. Okay, so now for an ideal series resonance circuit, we know what is the resonance frequency. And we know that the, when, when the frequency drops, below omega r, this term will be inductive. It will be a positive imaginary number. If we go beyond for frequency higher than omega resonance, this term will, uh, this, the omega l will, um, let me repeat this again. For, for terms below resonance, if you drop below resonance, the capacitor will, the capacitive term, term will dominate, and this term becomes negative imaginary number. Uh, if, or if the omega becomes larger than resonance, then the positive imaginary term will dominate. Uh, so J omega L will be greater than J over omega C. They reach each reach balance only at resonance. But below resonance, the capacitive term will dominate, resulting in a negative complex, negative imaginary number. And above resonance, the inductive term will dominate, resulting in a positive imaginary number. Okay. So now we have to build on that and see how we can use this ideal resonance circuit, which at one specific frequency represents short circuit, to build a, a band pass filter. So this slide simply summarizes what I said earlier. At resonance, the, 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 the cancel one another, the inductive part cancel the imaginary, the inductive cancel the, ca the capacitive, and then the total impedance is zero, it's simply short circuit. Below resonance, the capacitive term dominates and the impedance is negative and imaginary and um, and for above above uh, above resonance 
the omega L term will dominate. Then that the Z in B Z in shown here, which is G omega L minus G over omega C, will become a positive imaginary number like G one hundred, G two hundred, and so on. Okay, this is how we use this ideal RLC circuit to build a bandpass filter. You connect it in a circuit like this one with a load. So you have a load here, another resistance R, and then you have this circuit. At one specific frequency, which is resonance circuit, this looks like short circuit. Okay, so effectively at resonance, we have this circuit here. So V in will be transferred to the output with no attenuation at omega resonance, at F equal to F resonance and omega equal to omega resonance. At DC, the capacitor represents open circuit. So for DC, this is open circuit. And when F goes to infinity, when the frequency is very large, the impedance of the inductor becomes uh, also approaches infinity because equal to G omega L. And this also represents the open circuit. So for DC, which is 0 hertz, or for infinity, we have this circuit here. Uh, this means that the input is disconnected from the output, and V output will be equal to 0. So this circuit really acts like a, a, a low bias filter, and if you try to, try to plot its response, you'll see if you plot it with frequency, this is F, you'll see at one specific frequency, it gives you 1. So V out over V in will be equal to 1. If we put the ratio here, and this is modulus, it will give you 1. Okay, And this, this will be achieved at omega resonance. At DC, it gives you 0. At very high frequency, it also gives you 0. Okay, this is a bandpass filter, and I can play with the component values with the L and C to determine what frequency band I would like to pass. Okay, of course, I'm, I'm showing it to have, for an ideal case, the bandwidth is actually narrower than this. It's way sharper than this, than this profile. Uh, but when you, in, in reality, the inductance L has usually a, a series resistance, and this makes the response a little bit smoother and wider in nature. Okay, so now we move to the practical circuit. As I mentioned in the previous slide, usually inductances and inductance is, is made of a, of a number of turns of a wire, and this wire must have a resistance. There is no really uh, uh, ideal wire with zero resistance. Resistance can be small, but if you have a large number of turns, the, the resistance will there be some effective value for this resistance. So, um, in, the, in, in many books, they refer to this as the winding resistance RW. It's usually small, few ohms, 5 ohm, 10 ohms, things like that. Not, not big number. Uh, so, the total resistance now seen in a practical series resonance circuit is the impedance of the resistance plus the impedance of the inductance plus the impedance of the capacitance. So, it's equal to RW plus J omega L minus G over omega C. Now, we have seen in the previous slides that the impedance of an ideal LC circuit, series LC circuit, will reach a minimum of zero at resonance. But above resonance, its impedance will start to grow. It becomes either inductive or capacitive, so the modulus is growing. Uh, here we have exactly the same thing. If you try to get the modulus of this term, you will see that the modulus is equal to the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. The imaginary part is omega L minus 1 over omega C, or I can write it as XL minus XC squared. This impedance reached the minimum value at resonance, because at resonance, XL cancels XC. And the bandwidth, it's actually, the, the resonance here, frequency is still the same. The resonance frequency does not depend on RW, okay? Unlike the case for the, the parallel resonance circuit, as we'll see, it depends on the, uh, on the uh, resistance of the winding. But for this one, it's still XL equal to XC, so omega L is equal to 1 over omega C, or omega resonance is 1 over square root LC. Now, how do we define a bandwidth for such a circuit? You'll see that the impedance reaches a minimum at specific frequency, which is omega resonance, but for any other frequencies, these two do not cancel each other out, so this term will be non-zero, and the impedance will be larger than RW. Actually, when, you, when the frequency goes to infinity, this term becomes infinite, G omega L approaches infinity, and the input impedance becomes infinite. And at DC, 
the impedance of the capacitor becomes minus j infinity so then this represents again open circuit so um so only at around resonance we're getting the minimum value of rw but the modulus of the impedance grows to infinity at zero and grows to infinity as well when the frequency becomes very large so how do we determine a bandwidth the bandwidth for such a circuit is determined is determined uh, um, in terms of the impedance of the modulus of the impedance and this is a little bit different from uh, previous circuits we have seen so here when we want to talk about the bandwidth of a, a series r lc circuit they refer to the modulus of the impedance okay so now let's proceed let's see how we can define this bandwidth this is a profile of the impedance, the modulus of the impedance when you have a finite resistance RW. The impedance reaches a minimum value of RW at the resonance frequency. So this is the resonance frequency here. So I can simply put this number here in the middle as FR, and this is where the impedance reaches minimum. And this, this minimum is simply equal to RW. Now, for any frequency either below resonance, if you go below resonance, or you go above resonance, the impedance that model start to increase. And as I said, at, at DC, it will it should approach infinity. In, 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 I'm not I'm showing it flattering here, but in reality, it actually, it will grow to infinity very fast, okay? So really, I, if, I, if I may correct this one to be more accurate, this actually is growing to infinity, and this one will also grow to infinity at zero, okay? Because in this part, the, the, the capacitor becomes infinite, has an infinite impedance, and here the inductor will have an infinite impedance when the, when the frequency becomes very large. Now, we'll define the bandwidth to be the difference between the frequencies F2 and F1, where F1 is the frequency at which the impedance becomes a square root 2 multiplied by R winding, and F1 is the frequency higher than resonance, higher than FR, at which the impedance also grows to square root to RW. So there are two frequencies around resonance at which the impedance will grow from RW here at resonance to square root RW. Our bandwidth, by definition, is F2 minus F1. How do we define this bandwidth? It's very simple. This is the expression for the modulus of the impedance. We will equate it to square root 2 of RW. And I can simply write this term here as Expand it as square root rw squared plus rw squared. So now we have here rw squared here. So for this term, for for this one to be equal to this one, then the, the frequency that will that will satisfy that must make xl minus xc all squared. And I have a typo here because the this uh, this uh, exponent is actually for the whole term. So this is this is square here, okay? It's XL minus XC squared. <clears throat> so I will equate this term here to RW squared. So at one specific frequency, the difference between XL minus XC squared will be equal to RW squared. And this is the frequency at which the modulus of the impedance is equal to square root to RW. Of course, if you, if you equate this term to Rw squared, you have two solutions. Xl minus Xc is equal to plus or minus Rw. And both of them actually will yield that answer. Why? Because at F1, the impedance of the capacitor is larger in modulus than the impedance of the, ind of the inductor. Then Xl minus Xc will, will, give, a negative will give a negative a negative number will give a negative number. So in that case, for a negative number here to equal to negative number here, I must take the negative sign. Okay? So I will take the negative sign, I will make XL minus XC is equal to minus RW, and this should give me F1. Okay? So remember at F1, the, the reactance of the capacitor is bigger than the reactance of the inductor, because we dropped below resonance. In this case, this term is negative. For this, for this equation to be valid, the negative term on the left-hand side must be equal to a negative term on the right-hand side. But Rw is always positive. Then I must take the negative sign. So the equation I'm going to be solving, I will multiply both sides with a negative sign. So I end up that Xc minus Xl is equal to Rw. <clears throat> and this will be satisfied at W1. 
at W1, which is equal to 2 by F1. This is one equation in one unknown, which is W1, because RW is given, L is given, C is given. I can multiply both sides by W1. I convert it into a quadratic equation. I can obtain its solution through the, the law that the solution of a quadratic equation is minus A plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2, uh, 2A. It's, it's a law for solving quadratic equations. Now, if in, in order to get the frequency F2, at F2, XL is greater than XC. Okay, the reactance of the inductance is, re is greater than the reactance of the capacitor once we go beyond the resonance. So in that case, I take the positive sign. So X, a positive term on the left-hand side is equal to a positive term on the right-hand side. So the, to, get, to get F2, I will write that XL minus XC at F2 is equal to RW, or I end up with this equation, this equation here, okay? And this equation is, again, a quadratic equation in, in omega-2. I can solve it using the law for quadratic uh, equations. And you, you will see that uh, there is only one, the, the law gives two solutions, but only one of them is actually physical. The one where it leads, leads a, gives a positive answer. Okay, so if you apply the law for solving quadratic equations, solve for all I double omega 1 and omega 2, you obtain these two solutions. So these are the two frequencies at which the modulus of the impedance reaches square root 2 of its minimum value. And minimum value is Rw. Okay? Uh, the expression is a little bit complicated, but the good news is this square root is common to both of them. So if I want to get the bandwidth, the bandwidth in radian per second is omega 2 minus omega 1. And in hertz, it's omega 2 minus omega 1 divided by 2 pi, because omega 2 over 2 pi will give us F, uh, F2, omega 1 by 2 pi will give us F1. So if I subtract these two, Rw over 2L minus minus Rw over 2L will give me Rw over 2L. So the, the, imbina, the winding resistance divided by 2 by L is my bandwidth. Okay? So when you subtract them and you divide by 2 by, you end up with this one. Now, if I divide, so this expression, this is my bandwidth in hertz, okay? So I would like you all to remember this number is in hertz. Because I converted from omega 2 minus omega 1 to F2 minus F1. Now, if I divide both sides but by F resonance, as you could see here, so this equation is valid, I divide by F resonance. 2 by F resonance multiplied by L give me omega RL. This is the reactance of the inductance at resonance. And this here is the in, uh, resistance of the inductance. This term here, XL over, um, over RW, is actually called the quality factor. So here I have a typo. This is not the quality factor. This is 1 over the quality factor. Okay? This term here should be infinity when RW is 0. So Q is called the quality factor. Why do you call it the quality factor? Because an ideal inductor should have a zero resistance. In that case, the ratio XL to RW will give you infinity. Because RW is infinity. Okay? RW is zero, so X, Q will be infinite. So, so the Q term um, really determines the quality of the, uh, of the inductor. So in, whenever I say quality factor, just remember the mean by quality factor XL divided by R. This is what the quality factor means. For an ideal inductor, this term is infinite. For a practical inductor, you divide a very large value by a small resistance, Rw. You should write this one as Rw just to be consistent. And this should give you a number. It's usually in the hundreds and the thousands for a good coil. Now, if you organize things again and multiply both sides here by Fr, you get this equation, which is used very often in, uh, in analyzing um, resonance circuits that the bandwidth of the resonance circuits is the resonance frequency divided by Q. So for an ideal L, for an ideal LC circuit, Q is infinity. Q is infinity means the bandwidth is zero, and this is 100% right, because if you want to plot the response of an ideal LC circuit, it's actually it's extremely steep. Okay, so you go up from, from the zero to... I don't know what is this value. If I call this value the big value here, you, you are growing actually very fast 
relative to uh, to the change of frequency. Your bandwidth effectively zero. Your bandwidth effectively zero here in this case. But for the uh, for the idea for the practical case, no, you have a bandwidth, and this bandwidth is the, is the difference between f two minus f one, and is given by this number here, f r over q. Okay, let's take a look at an example. We have a, a, a resonance circuit shown here. So you have a winding resistance for RW, an inductance of L and the capacitance C. L is 50 millihenry. C is equal to 450, uh, 450 picofarad. And the R winding is equal to uh, 40 ohm. I'm going to correct this one, make it R winding. Uh, my target here is to determine the resonance frequency and the bandwidth. Once we know all the components of the circuit, we know everything really. The resonance frequency, uh, omega r, is 1 over square root LC, regardless of RW, regardless of RW. And so fr is 1 over 2 by square root LC. Uh, the bandwidth, I, can, I have the equation for the bandwidth if I know the quality factor. So once I have the resonance frequency, I can get XL, ratio between XL and RW. This gives me the quality factor. And then from the quality factor, I know that the bandwidth is the ratio of the resonance frequency divided by the quality factor. So I can solve in that case for the bandwidth. Okay, so here the resonance frequency, 1 over 2 by square root LC. L is equal to 50 millihenry, so 0.05 henry. Uh, C, 450 picofarad, 10 to the minus 12. If you multiply all this, take the square root, multiply by 2 by, and then take the inverse you get 33.55 kilohertz. Quality factor by definition is the ratio of the reactance of the inductance to resistance of the windings at resonance. So here this is 2 by multiplied by F resonance multiplied by the value of the inductance which is 50 millihenry. So 0 0.05 henry. This is the FR which is just calculated 33.55 kilohertz. So I multiply by 10 to the power 3 and the, the winding is resistance 40 ohm. If you divide these two, you get 263.524. So this is a very, very high quality f uh, resonance circuit because the, band, the ratio between the bandwidth and the resonance frequency uh, is pretty, is pretty the, the bandwidth is a very small factor of the, of the resonance frequency. So now if you say the bandwidth of FR divided by Q, you get the, the bandwidth only 127 hertz. So even though the frequency is pretty high, the resonance frequency is 33.55 kilohertz, but, but the frequency that goes without attenuation now in that frequency has only a bandwidth of 127 hertz, which is a very narrow uh, bandwidth. Okay, one last thing I would like to mention about uh, these circuits. In a general, this is a band bus filter. Uh, you connect the series resonance circuit in series with the resistance R1. At, at resonance, the impedance here is RW. These two cancel each other out. So what you are getting the ratio between V out to Vn is R1 over R1 plus RW. And usually RW is very small, so this ratio is very close to 1. At, at infinity, this is open this, the, the inductor is open circuit, and the input is connected from the output, the output is zero. At DC, the capacitor is open circuit, and then you are not getting any input. Now, what about at any other frequency? At any arbitrary frequency, if, if you are asked to calculate the ratio between V out to V in, you have to get the ratio between R1, it's a voltage divider, the same current is going through them both, okay? Because we assume there is no loading from any other external circuit, the same current is flowing in both of them, then it's a voltage divider between this resistance R1 and this total resistance. I will call this one here Z total, ZT. So it's R1 over R1 plus ZT. What is ZT? It is RW plus G omega L minus G over omega C. And this ratio will change with frequency. It's going to be a complex number. It change amplitude and phase with frequency. Because if the input is sinusoidal, the output will also be sinusoidal but the amplitude and phase will, will be determined by this complex ratio here.